Hey everybody, Rob Satcher from Feedback Crunch. Um, you know what? It's the middle of the winter. It's February. It sucks. But I want to talk about if you want to grow your small business, what does it actually take? And one of the things I've been realizing, I watch a ton of YouTube and it seems like a lot of people have tons of advice but not a lot of execution. If you're watching people online, whether they're on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube, they don't have evidence of their get it done credibility. Be very suspicious because there's a huge difference in telling you things that are true and telling you things that will absolutely get it done in terms of building, starting, and growing your own small business. I have been finding vast amounts of influencers that want to give you advice about content creation, about search engine optimization, about all sorts of things that supposedly will help you become a millionaire, be free, enjoy all the benefits of entrepreneurship, and they're full of crap. They've never gotten results. And I'm not here to sound negative. I want you to be equipped with a couple of really important things that I want you to know. First off, you have to become credible. If you want to grow a small business, you want to be an entrepreneur, doggone it, you better get good at solving problems. I believe that the two primary functions of an entrepreneur are number one, you have to get sales. That means find people that have a problem that needs solving and intersect with them and ask them to give you money to solve their problem. And number two, you solve their problem. You execute, you actually get that done. Now, let's talk about why I use the word credibility. There's two forms of credibility. One is the credibility that you have a resume of work and proof and evidence that you deliver on these uh, promise, promises you've made. Have you executed? The second part of this is, are you credible in your own mind? Do you truly believe and know and understand the value that you deliver, the problem that you solve, and your unique approach, approach of why someone should choose you? If you wrap your mind around the, both of those things and start to grow in both of those areas, building a resume of credible outcomes and building your own internal conviction around your credibility, you would become unstoppable or you'll at least be in position to go out and to start prospecting and to start creating videos and to start going out and doing more sales and you'll be in position to grow your business. But if you do not believe that you're credible and you're faking it till you make it, you will fail. I'm not a big advocate of fake it till you make it. I'm a big advocate in become credible. Well, how does one become credible? If you're starting a business, it's often good for you to start out in that business. I don't recommend that folks become entrepreneurs and do a startup in an area that they've gotten no results, that they've had very little credibility built. I, I often see on Shark Tank where folks will start a restaurant or what is it? Gordon Ramsay's show. I start a restaurant. Why? Because I like the restaurant industry. Why? Because I love eating at restaurants. That's a terrible reason to start a restaurant, right? If, if the primary thing that's getting you involved into a business is that you like the benefits of it, you should be very suspicious because what it needs to be is that you understand what, what the, the main reason to get involved into a business is, is that you can use, it's within your uh, hedgehog concept. Well, what do I mean by that? You should get involved in types of businesses that can leverage your experience to be excellent at. Number one, can you be excellent at something? Do you know how to actually do this thing well or can you learn? Number two, is it something that you can be passionate about? Will, it, will you get up in the morning and pursue excellence and pursue the grind to help people in this area? Can you be passionate about it? Number three, can it drive your economic engine? I'm flabbergasted by how many folks I intersect with that start businesses that never play the movie forward about how difficult it will be to feed your family on the net profits. Have you ever considered how many sales you're going to have to get in order to break even? You must do those things. So when you're considering a type of business to start, and, and if you think about, is it something that I want to start and become credible in? Number one, you have to decide, does this fit my my hedgehog principle, only do things that meet all three. 
You can drive your economic engine. You can be passionate about it and you can be excellent at it. You can be good at it. If that's true, then pursue it. Now, the second thing is you have to build credibility. The best way to do that is to start at cheap or free or get a job in the industry and do it as an employee. Those are the three best ways. How do you build credibility in order to start a business? You have to either get a job in an industry and learn from it. Go work at a competitor and learn everything about the competitor. Does that sound a little dishonest? Perhaps, but it is not. It is a very surefire way for you to get credible in the industry. So go get a job at a competitor and learn it for two years. Go put that work in. Two years will go by like a fart in the wind. It'll be so quick you won't even know. Number two, you can start doing it for free. And that means you go find folks that perhaps have that problem and you pitch the idea, I'm looking to start this business would you allow me to do this for cheap or for free? And initially do it for free. Get credibility, learn from it, give it away for free. I started two businesses and both of them, our initial clients, we did it for free. Once we did it for free, we said, what could we do better? We learned from it, we kept improving and eventually I went out and I showed that person as somebody who we did it, or we leveraged that credibility of delivering the results. So you can start out finding people that want it for free, show that you delivered the outcome, right? Not just that you met the minimum expectation, but that you delivered some benefits that you actually added value. And then you can use that previous, that, that number one free sale you did, use the value you delivered there as a credible result that you got as you go forward to the next sale. Then do it again, raise the price a little bit or do it for free. Perhaps you need to do three to five free or very cheap or very inexpensive customers when you first start going in order to build a resume of credibility. And once you do that, you know what's going to happen. And here's the credibility. It's not just that you did it. It's that you executed well, on time, on budget, according to the expectation, right? Did you set and meet a good expectation? And then lastly is, was it valuable? And then you have to understand what was valuable there, right? Once you do that, you will have the tools needed as you move forward and engage with new prospects and new sales in order to connect your credibility. Here's what I did for them. It doesn't matter what it costs. You can even share that you did it for cheap or free. You can go ask Dylan and talk to him about how I delivered more leads for them. Go talk to this customer about how we were able to find the best photos for their family and they enjoyed them, right? You want to be a photographer, start for free. You want to be a wedding and then you fast forward that to any industry. Build credibility by doing it for cheap or free, one thing at a time, and you're building your resume. That's really what you're doing. So those are the two ways that you have to become credible in order for you to actually grow a business. Now, once you start understanding that you have a resume of credibility that you can show people and you are credible internally to yourself, you will then have conviction as you unbox the ways that you can actually help people and that's what this business is. That's the, my, my big second tip is if you make your mission in your business, yes, get sales and yes, execute. But what you're really doing is serving and honoring people, helping people, helping people go from stuck to better, from here to there. You are a guide to help them move to a better future. That's what capitalism is. And that's what people don't understand when they criticize the free market, that on one end of the spectrum, these evil corporations, they're certainly evil corporations. Usually it's tied to the amount of government and cronyism and protectionism that they've acquired for themselves or the influence they buy unduly through lobbyists, right? Usually corporations are only as corrupt as the amount of government power there is to protect themselves. That's that's a whole other story. But um, holy cows, that rant went all over the place. But as you're building your credibility and you're getting going, all right, I forgot for a second there. You have to be passionate about actually helping people. A corporation, a business that thrives, embraces this idea that you are out there to serve people, to solve problems, to make their life better, and to get them to choose you, right? If you treat people so well, what's going to happen is people will choose you over their competitors. If you don't believe in your bones that you've crafted a business or a solution, or as an entrepreneur, you're not an excellent solution, you need to do the hard work in order to find out how do you improve, become a better solution. But then you have to own it in your soul 
that you are committed to excellence. And, and you have to be committed to excellence. But when you're committed to excellence, you're, you're really helping people. And if you don't believe that yet, I want you to sit back and you might need a little bit of motivation. You might need to stop and think about the impact that you're having for your employees, for your for your customers, and think of really how are you impacting them. Now, there's certainly sectors that are difficult to do that in, right? But you have to come to this conclusion that by executing well, you're doing good things for the people you intersect with, for your employees, for the communities that you're in. You have to do a little bit of homework to find out what that is, right? And if you don't understand your true value of how you're serving other people, how you're improving them, how you're creating a better future in some way, shape, or form, small or large, immediate, or like philosophically, whatever that is, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be in the in the small details that you transform people's lives. It can be that you just simply provide an excellent dinner and a great experience that families can rely on, right? Or it could be that you transform a small business or you provide life insurance when people really need it or you build a retirement, whatever it is. You gotta come to grips about what it really means. Now, let's shift into how do you do that? I think that one of the best ways to do that is to start listing out what can go wrong if you choose a bad solution to the primary problem that you're working on. Start thinking about all the nightmare scenarios. Now, you don't want to use these nightmare scenarios as fear-mongering fuel, but you want to come to grips that, man, I've heard stories about when this goes improper and, and folks choose the wrong thing, that's what it looks like. Oh, man, they're unreliable. They break things. You actually have to pursue them legally, right? Or it's unsafe, or ultimately you're left having to redo all of the work. Whatever that looks like, you have to come to grips with that and go through and just think about, boy, what are some nightmare scenarios that you've heard about competitors or other solutions out there? The point is, is you have to do the work to understand the value that you're delivering and it needs to, you have to root it in some sort of servitude, in some sort of others focused thing. Otherwise, you're going to run out of fuel. You can only enjoy um, money so much. Eventually, the people that come into your business are going to need to know that they're doing meaningful work and you will grow your conviction and your ability to sell and your conviction that you are a great solution when you can connect that to a passion, right? Another thing that I want to talk about, the third thing, is that you must prospect. If you want your business to succeed, you don't just sit back and hope that some of your website stuff works. You don't just sit back and wait for people to call you. You find a way to get your front end activity into gear. Now, what is this front end activity? There are different types of businesses, B2B, you have direct to consumer, whatever that looks like. You either need to be calling people and doing sales calls. You need to go to trade shows. You need to make cold emails and outreaches. You have to make cold or warm um, phone calls. You have to intersect with people because here's something that's true. The more meaningful a transaction or business transaction there is, the more likely that end user is an engaged person who has two wheels on the hands of their life, right? Now, it could be that you have a product that gets recommended as being a great product, but generally speaking, if you want a great B2B sale to happen, if you want a great... Um, larger transaction, perhaps you're a remodeler, you have to work really diligently to stay in front of as many people as possible in order to create a mathematical inevitability that you will succeed, that you will get enough sales. Because here's the truth. Sales is the lifeblood of your business. If you don't have sales, it doesn't matter how good you are at something, you don't get to do it. <laughs> so you must figure out how to get more sales. And the truth is, is that sales is all about, I think great sales is not about pushing and sliming. We often say it's not about cold calling, but what it is about is that you're in the business of finding people with a problem. They're stuck. They have some sort of problem. You engage and solve that problem and bring them to a better future, a better tomorrow, a better there. You move people from here to there. Now, there's immediate problems, there's philosophical problems, there's deep problems, there's some basic stuff that you can hit on or some really deep stuff. But when you embrace this thought that sales is not about going out and trying to pressure people into giving you money, 
But what it is about is getting in front of as many people as possible with problems that need to be solved or who are stuck in a certain situation or who are eventually going to make some sort of purchase. And then you have to find a way to cultivate a relationship. Or, and when I say you have to cultivate a relationship with them in some way, shape, or form, that doesn't mean that you become their friend, but it means that you somehow position yourself as a guide to solve their problems. I had I made a video that said, I think that all sales are about relationships. And somebody says, I don't want a relationship with my salesperson. That's not true. Every time you buy something, even if it's on Amazon, to a degree, they, there are there's a guide somewhere. That guide could be a YouTuber and a piece of content. That guide could be just something on a website. It could be that it's your salesperson for a remodeling gig, whatever that is. There is a guide there. And as a company, you either insert yourself to, con to help control where that goes and move people, identify people with the problem that you solve and make sure that it's the right problem. Make sure you set great expectations and then provide them an opportunity to actually choose you. And that's what sales is really about. You're a guide. You want to find people that are stuck. You want to find a way to be in front of them at the right time with the right problem and the right solution. And then you want to invite them to choose you as a solution, right? And front-end activity means that, it, that you are going to be in position so that they know that you're there and you're engaged with them in some way, shape, or form. And there's kind of two ways to do that right now. You have your traditional sales stuff, and I think you need to do that. Even with digital marketing, it's not enough. You still have to have some fundamental sales activity, and it's usually around calling, emailing, paid digital marketing. And then I would say that the way you take that digitally now is through video, right? So if you have a small business and you're like, oh, it seems like cold calling would be painful, then you need to flood your YouTube channel and your website and your social media with video that positions you to help other people. So anyways, those are three things that I think are really important if you're thinking of starting a business. Uh, you know, Hopefully that's helpful. Good luck, subscribe, like, and subscribe. Um, sorry I'm not more attractive and funnier or whatever that is, but my goal is to help you as a business owner. Good luck and God bless.